All right, now that we've introduced this concept of activity coefficient, I wanted to take a moment and talk about um, how we can use it uh, in modeling of vapor liquid coexistence. And so we'll talk about modeling vapor liquid coexistence using activity coefficients uh, in a series of uh, screencasts. So we'll try and break it down into small parts. And this first part, we'll just look at, you know, writing down our criteria of phase coexistence, you know, including non-idealities of my liquid and vapor phase. And then we'll talk about simplifications and other screencasts and how we can gain insights in terms of into the um, underlying intermolecular interactions based on say PXYs um, later on as well. Okay, but I'm just going to start with our basic criteria phase coexistence and you know how we can use these quantities that we've cooked up now. Okay. So if I have a system at vapor liquid coexistence, our criteria phase coexistence are so our um, thermal equilibrium is equality of temperatures, mechanical equilibrium is equality of pressures, chemical equilibrium we could describe in a number of ways. We could say that the chemical potential of each species in each phase is the same, or we could say that the fugacity of each component in each phase is the same. Okay, so let's start with fugacity. Okay, and so oftentimes I'll call this my isofugacity criteria. Iso just being the fugacity of those two phases are um, the same. Okay, so I'm going to say that the fugacity of component I in the liquid phase at Tp in Xi is equal to the fugacity of component I in the vapor phase also at Tp, but composition Yi. All right, so then our next step is, okay, so I'm going to take a, a slight of a slight side to work with logs because we've been dealing with logs so far. And we've said that when we deal with fugacities, okay, our typical approach is going to be to take our fugacity or log fugacity and write it as the sum of a correctional term, okay, sum of a log correctional term plus log reference value, okay. Or if I didn't have logs, but I had you know our exp uh, not not the log of our uh, quantity, but the exponential of the log, so the the actual quantity as I have here in my um, isofugacity expression, then I would equivalently have the F is equal to the product of my correction times my reference. Okay, so our general approach is going to be to take my fugacity and write it as the product of correctional term times uh, reference state value. Okay. So if I get back to our isofugacity expression, okay, that's what we're going to do next. So starting with our liquid phase, uh, when modeling liquid phases, the most common reference state that we'll adopt is that of an ideal solution. So if I expand this, taken as my reference and ideal solution, I get gamma i at Tp and Xi times the fugacity of component i in an ideal solution also at Tp and Xi. When I'm modeling my vapor phase, the most common reference state that we'll adopt is that of an ideal gas. Okay, So if I take my reference state to be an ideal gas, my correctional term is going to be phi i, my fugacity coefficient, which is a function of Tp and yi, times the fugacity of component i in an ideal gas at Tp and yi. Okay, cool. Then the next trick we're going to do, right, is we're going to expand out our ideal terms. Okay, we're going to expand out our um, F ideal solution term and our ideal gas term. Okay, and what's going to happen here that's important is think about the design of a separation process. So think of the flash drum problems we've looked at um, so far um, in this course. If I'm trying to design a separation processes, what I'm really interested in is the composition of those two phases in coexistence, right? What's the composition of component I in my vapor and liquid, right? I don't care what the numerical value of the fugacity is. What I care about are the, the compositions. And so what we're going to obtain um, by expanding our fugacities is we'll end up getting an expression which is explicit in the compositions we're trying to solve for, okay? And what I mean by that is if we look at the left-hand side, gamma and the fugacity of my ideal solution, they're functions of x, right? They're implicit in x, they're not explicit in x, right? x doesn't appear as a variable like it's all for. Same thing on the right-hand side, they're not explicit in y, y is not a variable that I could rearrange my expression and solve for, OK? 
Okay, and so that's going to come next when we expand out um, our DLI's terms. So on the left hand, oh, uh, one more aside uh, before I forget. Um, when I look at this, um, to get the jargon right, this is often called the gamma phi method of vapor liquid coexistence, the gamma phi method. And what it's referring to is we're using gammas to account for non idealities in my liquid phase. Okay, and gamma is our notation for activity coefficient, right? Tells us we're defining non idealities with respect to an ideal solution. So, uh, gamma. Phi, vapor phase, we're defining everything with respect to an ideal gas reference state. So, phi corresponding to fugacity coefficient. So, common, common jargon is this is the gamma phi method um, of vapor liquid uh, phase coexistence. Okay. But, all right, so expanding our uh, reference state fugacities. So, on the left hand side, okay, I have gamma i at Tp and xi. And then, f ideal, remember, is just xi times. Fi pure. Okay, so now the left hand side, right, is explicit in Xi, the mole fraction I'm trying to solve for. And the right hand side, then my fugacity coefficient, then fugacity coefficient of a um, component I in an ideal gas, remember it's just equal to its partial pressure. So this would be Yi times P. Okay, cool. So here is me rigorously expanding out the fugacity in my liquid and vapor phase with respect to an ideal solution and ideal gas, respectively. Okay, cool. So before we part, okay, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to look at Fi pure, right? I just want to have a little refresher. Okay, so when we talk about vapor liquid coexistence, we have a liquid and vapor phase uh, in equilibrium at the same um, temperature and pressure. So my liquid and vapor are at in equilibrium at a given TMP. Fi pure would correspond to if I had a system of pure component I um, at the same TMP. So I have a system of pure component I um, at the same TMP. Okay, um, and so that's at you know TMP, which my two phase systems at phase coexistence. Um, so if you think about uh, uh, phase diagram PXY or TXY, um, so in that two phase region, so when I have a binary system at two phase equilibrium. If I were just to have a pure component system, so be at either one of those extremum, um, well, it's not necessarily going to be correspond to VLE for that uh, pure component system. And so when I think about calculating the fugacity of component I in a pure component state of a given TMP, uh, this is where we um, expand our fugacity, where you write it as the sum of the value at pure component saturation at T plus my correctional term, which goes from um, P sat to P, my pressure of interest. Okay. Um, and so remember the buzzword there is pointing correction. And so just to you know take an aside, remember this was log fugacity of component I uh, in this pure component state at T and P. We wrote as being equal to log Fi <clears throat> at pure component saturation yep, at T plus log Fi pure at T and P minus log Fi sat, pure component saturation at T, right? A mathematical trick of, of adding zero, okay? Where this, all right, this is what's called the pointing correction. These two states are correspond to pure components, uh, pure component states at the same, uh, pure component system at the same uh, temperature. Uh, so to get the change in fugacity due to pressure, um, for my expression for dimensionless g, that's just my integral of v over rt dp. Okay, this term. All right. So now, you know, I write this out then. All right, not using logs, but I have fi pure at t and p. Okay, um, fi sat. Okay, that's going to become vi at pure component saturation at t times um, pi sat. At T, right? So if that's the fugacity of component I at saturation, I expand it with respect to an ideal gas, right? This would correspond to pure component I at vapor liquid coexistence at T. So if I think about the fugacity of that vapor phase, I can adopt a reference state of an ideal gas. It's a pure component. Uh, and so I could expand that as fugacity coefficient times um, pure component vapor pressure. And then this just becomes my pointing correction. Okay, so if I want to assume it's 
uh, incompressible, then this would be V over RT P minus P sat. Okay, if it wasn't incompressible, then that last term, so I box it in, would be um, this would be uh, V over RT times the integral of uh, V dP. Okay, so if we just assume it's incompressible, we'll just factor out the volume um, to keep it simple. Okay, so these two equations boxed in. All right, this is my rigorous, you know, gamma phi approach to modeling vapor liquid coexistence, where at this point I haven't made any assumptions. So what I'll do in the next screencast is I'm going to stop this. I'm going to pick up with these two equations, and we'll, you know, redrive Rayleigh's law. All right, now with our you know, expanded gamma phi approach to VLE. After we derive Rayleigh's law, we'll next derive what's called modified Rayleigh's law. Okay, so that'll be screencast two, then screencast three, and then from there we'll move on to looking at a PXY phase diagram and how we can use these gammas to gain insight in terms of what's happening um, at a molecular level. All right, so we'll see you in a minute.